Principality of Halic, Ukrainian, Galiknazyastvo Old East Slavic, Galiko Kayanzedestivo Romanian, C. Nezetl Halici, was a Kievan Rus principality established by members of the oldest line of Yaroslav the Wise descendants. A characteristic feature of Halic principality was an important role of the nobility and citizens in political life, consideration a will of which was the main condition for the princely rule. Halic as the capital mentioned in around 1124 as a seat of Ivan Vasilkovich the grandson of Rostislav of Tm Atarikan. According to Mykhailo Rushevsky the realm of Halic was passed to Rostislav upon the death of his father Vladimir Yaroslavic, but he was banished out of it later by his uncle to Tm Atarikan. The realm was then passed to Yaropolk Izyaslavich who was a son of the ruling Grand Prince of Kiev Izyaslav I of Kiev. Topic: Prehistory. First recorded Slavic tribes living in Red Ruthenia were Lendians and Delebes. In year 907, Dulebs were involved in military campaign against Constantinople led by Rus Prince Oleg of Novgorod. This is the first significant evidence of political affiliation of native tribes of Red Ruthenia. According to Nestor the chronicler some strongholds in west part of Red Ruthenia were conquered by Vladimir the Great in 981, and in 992 or 993 Vladimir carried out a military campaign against the Lendians. Around that time the city of Volodymyr was established in honor of him which became the main center of political power in the region. In the 11th century western border cities including Chemizel, were twice annexed by the Kingdom of Poland 1018-1031, and 1069-1080. In the meantime, Yaroslav the Wise established a solid foot in the region founding the city of Yaroslav. As part of the Kievan Rus the area was later organized as south part of Volodymyr Principality, where around 1085 with the help of the Grand Prince of Kiev Sevolod I of Kiev the three Rostislavich brothers, sons of Rostislav Vladimirovich of settled. Their lands were organized into three smaller principalities of Shemizel, Svenihorod and Terabolia. In 1097 the Terabolia Principality was secured after Vasilko Rostislavich by the Council of Lubich after several years of a civil war. In 1124 the Halic Principality as Minor Principality was given to Ihor Vasilkovich by his father Vasilko, the Prince of Terabolia out of the Terabolia Principality. <laughs> Unification Rostislavic brothers managed not only politically separate from Volodymyr, but also to defend themselves from external enemies. In 1099, in the battle on Rozhnya field Halicians defeated army of the Grand Prince Svetopolk II of Kiev and later that year army of Hungarian King Koloman near Shemizel. This two significant victories brought nearly 100 years of relative peaceful development of Halitian principality. Four sons of Rostislavich brothers divided the area into four parts with centers in Shemizel Rostislav, Svenihorod, Volodymyrko, Halic and Terabolia Ivan and Yuri. After the death of three of them Volodymyrko took Shemizel and Halic and Svenihorod gave to Ivan, son of his older brother Rostislav. In 1141 Volodymyrko moved his residence from Shemizel to more geographically advantageous Halic giving birth to a united Halician principality. 
In 1145 citizens of Halych, taking advantage of the absence of Volodymyrko, called to reign Ivan of Svenihorod. After the defeat of Ivan under the walls of Halych, also Svenigorod principality was incorporated into the Halician. <laughs> Era of Yaroslav Osmomysl Volodymyrko pursued a policy of balancing between neighbors managed to strengthen the power of the principality, attach some cities belonging to the Kiev Grand Prince and forced to keep them despite the conflict with both two powerful rulers Izyaslav II of Kiev and King Zsa II of Hungary. In 1152, after the death of Volodymyrko, Halitian throne was succeeded by his only son Yaroslav Osmomai. Yaroslav begins his reign with the battle on the river Siret in 1153 with Grand Prince Izyaslav, which resulted a heavy losses for the Halicians but retreat of Izyaslav, who died shortly thereafter. Thus the danger from the east had passed and Yaroslav via diplomacy reached peace with his other neighbors, Hungary and Poland. Subsequently, thanks to negotiations Yaroslav neutralized his only rival, the eldest descendant of Rostislavic brothers Ivan, former prince of Svenihorod. These diplomatic successes have enabled Yaroslav to focus on internal development of principality, construction of new buildings in capital and other cities, enrichment of monasteries, as well as strengthening his power over the territory in lower courses of Dniester, Prut and Danube rivers. Within this time around 1157, in Halych were completed a construction of Assumption Cathedral, second largest temple of ancient Rus after St. Sophia Cathedral in Kiev. The city itself grew into a big agglomeration with approximate dimensions of 11 by 8.5 km. Despite strong position in the international arena Yaroslav was under control of Halic citizens will of which he had to consider even sometimes in matters of personal family life. <laughs> Freedom in princes Significant feature in political life of Halitian principality was decisive role of nobles and citizens. Halicians used the principle of freedom in princes and themselves invited and expelled princes also correcting their activities. Despite the will of Yaroslav Osmo Meisel who left the throne to his younger son Oleg, Halicians invited his brother Vladimir II Yaroslavic, and later after conflict with him Roman the Great, Prince of Volodymyr. But almost immediately Roman was replaced by Andrew, the son of Hungarian King Bela III. The reason for this choice was a complete freedom of government that was guaranteed by Bella and Andrew to Halicians. This period can be considered as the first experience of self-rule government by noblemen and citizens. However, vulgar behavior of the Hungarian garrison and their attempts to install Roman Catholic rites led to another change in mood and to the throne again was returned Vladimir II, who ruled in Halych next decade up to year 1199. <laughs> Autocracy of Roman the Great and unification with Volhynia After the death of last descendant of Principality S founders Rostislavic brothers, Vladimir II in 1199, Halicians started negotiations with the sons of his sister daughter of Yaroslav Osmomysl and the legendary Prince Igor the main hero of the poem The Tale of Igor's Campaign about succession to the Halician throne. 
but Prince of Volodymyr Roman with the help of Prince Leszek the White managed to capture Halic despite a strong resistance of residents. Following next six years lasted a period of continued repression against the nobility and active citizens as well as a significant territorial and political expansion that transformed Halic in the main center of all Rus'. Volhynian Principality was united with Halician but this time the new center of Galicia Volhynia Principality became Halic. Further successful war with Igrovich brothers' contenders for the Galician throne enabled Roman the Great to establish his control over Kiev and place there his henchmen, one of them with the consent of Sevalod the Big Nest. After victorious campaigns against the Cumans, and probably Lithuanians, Roman the Great reached the height of its power and was called in the annals as the Tsar and Autocrator of all Rus'. After the death of Roman in 1205, his widow to keep power in Halicia called for help Hungarian King Andrew, which sent her the military garrison. However, in next 1206 year Halicians again invited Vladimir III Igrovich, son of Yaroslav Osmomizel's daughter, and Roman widow, along with the sons had to flee the city. <laughs> Climax of citizens' nobles' rule Vladimir III reigned in Halicia only two years. As a result of feuds with his brother Roman II, he was expelled and the latter took the Halicia throne. But very soon Roman was replaced by Rostislav II of Kiev. When Roman II managed to overthrow Rostislav Halicians called for help Hungarian king who sent to Halic Palatine Benedict. While Benedict remained in Halic citizens called to the throne Prince M.S. to Slav the Dumb from Perisovnitsia, who also with ridicules sent home. In an effort to get rid of Benedict citizens again invited Arevichiv brothers, Vladimir III and Roman II who expelled Benedict and regained their rule in the principality. Vladimir III settled in Halic, Roman II in Svenigorod and their brother Sviatoslav in Shemizel. Attempts of Igrovich brothers to rule themselves led to conflict with the Halicians during which many of them was killed, and later Igrovich brothers was executed. On the throne was planted a young son of Roman the Great Daniel of Halicia. After his mother made an attempt to concentrate power in his hands as regent, she was banished from the city, and to reign was again invited M.S. to Slav the Dumb who fled fearing Hungarian troops have been called by of Daniel S mother. After the failure of Hungarian King S campaign, the local community has made a unique step in the history of Rus enthroned in 1211 or 1213 one of the Halician noble Volodislav Kormulkic. This episode can be considered as a peak of citizens' nobles' democracy in Halic. Rule of Volodislav caused aggression of neighboring states and in spite of the Halician's resistance they managed to overwhelm Volodislav's army. In 1214 Hungarian King Andrew and Polish Prince Leszek signed an agreement about partition of Halician Principality. The western edge passed to Poland and the rest to Hungary. Palatine Benedict returned to Halic and the son of Hungarian King Andrew Koloman, received the crown from the Pope with the title of King of Galicia. However, religious conflict with the local population and capture by Hungarians' territory that was transferred to Poland, led to the expulsion in 1215 of all foreign forces and the enthronement of Prince M.S. to Slav the Bold from Novgorod under whose reign all power was concentrated in the hands of the nobility and prince not disposed even Halician army. 
Despite this MS to Slav also was not popular among the Halicians, who gradually began to favor Prince Andrew. In 1227 MS to Slav allowed his daughter to marry him and gave them government in Halicia. Andrew has been a long-time favorite of Halicia due to its careful approach to the rights of the nobility. However, in 1233 part of Halicians invited Daniel. As a result of the siege and the death of Andrew Daniel briefly seized the capital, but was forced to leave it not finding support of citizens' majority. In 1235, at the invitation of Halicians to the city came Chernigov Prince Michael of Chernigov and his son Rostislav his mother was the daughter of Roman the Great, the sister of Daniel. During the Mongol invasion, Halic turns in the hands of Daniel, but his power was not certain, because at this time Chronicle mentions an ascension to the throne a low s al nobleman Dobroslav Sudic. Daniel of Galicia and Mongol invasion In the 1240s in Halitian Principality's history occurred an important changes. In 1241 Narlich was captured by the Mongol army. In 1245 Daniel wins a decisive victory over the Hungarian-Polish army of his opponent Rostislav and again unites Halicia with Volhynia. After the victory built his residence in home in the western part of Volhynia. After Daniel's visit to Batu Khan, started payments of tribute to Golden Horde. All these factors led to the beginning of cultural, economic and political decline of Halic. <laughs> Last rise and decline Already in the time of Daniel's rule Halicia turned to the hands of his elder son Leo I of Halicia, who, after his father's death, gradually takes power in all areas of Volhynia. In the second half of the 13th century, he raised the importance of Lviv, a new political administrative center founded near Svenigorod on the border with Volhynia. Near 1300, Leo, in a short time, achieved power over Kyiv, remaining however dependent on the Golden Horde. After the death of Leo, the center of the united Halitian Volhynian state returns to the city of Volodymyr. In the times of following princes, nobles gradually regained power, and from 1341 to 1349, it came in the hands of nobleman Diemitro Dejko, at the nominal reign of Prince Lubatas. In 1349, after the death of Diemitro, Polish King Casimir III the Great marched on Lviv, while coercing with the Golden Horde and the Hungarian Kingdom. The result was the end of political independence of Halic and its annexation into the Polish crown. <laughs> Post-history In 1387 all lands of the Halitian Principality were included into the possessions of Polish Queen Jadwiga, and later in 1434 transformed into Ruthenian voivodeship. In 1772, Halicia was attached to the Austrian Empire within which it existed as an administrative unit called, "...Kingdom of Galicia and Lodomeria", with the centre in Lviv. Relations with Byzantine Empire Halitian Principality had a close ties with Byzantine Empire, closest than any other Principality of Kievan Rus. 
According to some records, Volodar of Peremishal backward s daughter Irina was married in 1104 to Isaac, third son of Byzantine Emperor Alexios I Komnenos. Her son, future Emperor Andronicus I Komnenos some time lived in Halic and ruled by several cities of principality in years 1164–65. According to reports of Bartholomew of Luca Byzantine Emperor Alexius III fled to Halic after the capture of Constantinople by Crusaders in 1204. Halician Principality and Byzantine Empire were frequent allies in the fight against Cumans. <laughs> Princes of Halic <laughs>